This is physics 12. This is question number 19 on page 438. In this problem, we have two charges. So one charge is here, and it's Q, and another one. And another one is over here, and we'll call that one Q as well. Now, in both cases, uh, Q is equal to positive 4 microcoulombs. Um, and we're asked to find the electric field at these two points here and here. And those points are called, respectively, points B and A. Now, the distances involved is, um, so there's the horizontal separation, and this is 5 centimeters, and this is another uh, 5 centimeters, and this is 10 centimeters. And the vertical distance is, uh, for both, is 5 centimeters. So, first of all, let's calculate the electric field at point B. So, the electric field at point B would be equal to the electric field uh, at B due to, so we'll call this Q1 and we'll call this Q2, even though they're the same. Uh, it's nice to know that because they're in different locations, it's nice to know a different subscript. So essentially, this would be the electric field at B due to 1 plus the electric field at B due to 2. Now, of course, this is uh, vector addition. It's not arithmetic addition. So let's calculate uh, EB1. And let's draw this vector again. We just have to focus on those two points. So again, I'll draw it here. Here's Q1, and here is point B. So what we have is we have a right angle triangle where this is 5 and so we're going to actually make this you know 0 0.05 meters which is 5 centimeters and this is 0 0.05 meters which is the same as 5 centimeters now this distance is the distance between the two points to calculate the electric field there's two kind of components to it there's the direction and the magnitude so the, the magnitude would be kq all over r squared, where r is this distance here between them. So in order to calculate r first, we'll have to calculate uh, Pythagoras. So essentially, it would be you know, um, 0 0.05 squared uh, plus 0 0.05 squared. Take the square root, and that's going to equal r. Now, you notice in the equation, we don't really want r, we want r squared. So if we square, therefore if we square this side, we can simplify this equation too, by the way, because the two terms are identical. So um, first of all, let's <coughs> kind of fix this in the sense that this is um, essentially the square root of 2 times 0 0.05 squared, because it's the same thing plus each other. And then let's square both sides. And so we'll get r squared is equal to. Uh, now, by the way, what's this before we square it, right? This is just root 2 times uh, 0 0.05. And so therefore, if we square it, we're just going to get uh, 2 times 0 0.05 squared, right? Which is the same, which is the same as this. Just take away the square root because we're squaring it. So now we can plug in our values. This is nine times ten to the power of nine times a q, which is four times ten to the power of negative six, divided by uh, two times 0 0.05 squared. Now remember, this is actually equal to r squared. So this is r squared. Okay, yeah, from here. 
So now we plug that through our calculator. And by the way, remember this was uh, EB1. And that will give us 7.2 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. OK, but we don't have a direction for that yet. However, one thing that you should notice here, and that is that notice both of these in this right angle triangle, both of the legs are equal. So I don't really need to do any type of uh, geometry or trigonometry for this because if the two sides of a triangle are equal, then this has to equal 45, and this also has to equal 45. That's <coughs> basic trig. So, um, a, obviously, you know, right, like inverse tangent uh, of uh, 1, 1 over 1 is 45. So, now we can kind of draw the vector here, and perhaps we can do that in a different color. Okay, so here is the vector. That's E, uh, B1, and the angle is 45. Okay, great. So we've got that so far. And um, now we can continue. So let's do uh, the other charge. Okay, so the other charge is here. Uh, here is one leg. Oh, I'm in the wrong color. So here is one leg, right? And here is the other leg. So this one's going to be, oh, uh, wait a second. Uh, I messed up. We're not dealing with point A. Uh, so that's wrong. We're dealing with point B still. So here and here. And here is the uh, hypotenuse. So this is still 5, right? But now this distance is 15. Or, right, or point um, 0 0.15 meters. And this, right, is uh, uh, 0 0.05 meters. OK, so let's try and. First of all, let's do the same thing. Let's kind of move it over. Maybe we can just have move it over here. And let's calculate EB2, right? Because we've already calculated this guy. Now we need to calculate EB2. And we need to add them vectorially then. So EB2 is equal to KQ over R squared again. And so we're going to go 9, 10 to the 9. Uh, times q4, 10 to the negative 6, divided by r squared. So this is r again. So this now is going to be um, r is 0 0.05 squared plus 0 0.15 squared. And um, we're going to take the square root of that to get r. But then notice we have to square it. So Maybe we just leave it like this, because that's all we need, right? Because right? Cause if r is equal to the square root of 0 0.05 squared plus 0 0.15 squared, then therefore r squared is just, just get rid of the square root sign, right? And um, so if we do that, uh, we're going to get an answer of uh, 1.44 times 10 to the power of 6. Um, now, we don't know the direction for that yet. So we know that it's in this direction, right? But what is this angle here, theta? So in order to do that, we'll say theta is equal to the inverse tangent of Remember, tan is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 5 over 15. Now, in this case, if you go 0 0.05 divided by 0.15, it doesn't matter because it's a ratio. So I can just go 5 over 15. That's opposite over hypotenuse. And if I do that, uh, I end up getting 18 
0.4 degrees, okay, approximately. Uh, so now I know what theta is here. Uh, so what I can do now is it turns into a geometry problem or trigonometry problem. So I've got two, f so I've got both of these guys now. Now I need to add them vectorially. So in order to do this, uh, we, let's kind of move over here a little bit and uh, kind of draw them again. So this is point B, right? I've got a force going this way, which is uh, E, B, uh, 2. And I've got a force going this way. And this one was, this one's actually bigger. This one's E, B, 1. And um, this angle was 18.4. And then this angle's 45, right? Because I know that from before. Right, there's my other one. There's EB1 at 45. And then EB2 here is my 18. And remember, uh, if this angle here is 18, then if I go like this, then this angle also has to be 18, right? So now how do I add these two guys? This is not a right angle triangle. So what I'm going to have to do is use sine and cosine law. There is another way. You could split these guys up horizontally and vertically and then add them bo up both in the x and the y and then use Pythagoras. That's one way to do it. I'm just going to use cosine and sine law. So um, to do this, we'll add them head to tail. So I'll start off with EB1. So let's say again, this is like this and this one's uh, bigger and this one's going to be um, 7.2, 10 to the power of 6. And this here is 45 degrees. And then I'm going to add the other guy, which was shallower and smaller. Okay, So therefore, this angle here was 18.4. Um, and now, OK, so the question now is, what's this angle here? So if you know how, in, in terms of geometry, if you know that what this angle is, then you know what this angle is. Those are called alternate interior angles. So that means this is also equal to 45. So if we add these two angles up, right? So when we are adding them head to tail, this is now as the resultant, starting from there, right? So this plus that. And this one, by the way, was 1.44, 10 to the uh, 6. We, we calculated that as well. So now, in order to calculate, well, let's just assume now that, for example, this is side A, this is side B, and this is side C. So using cosine law, C squared is equal to A squared. Well, doesn't matter. I'm using uppercase here, lowercase here. Plus B squared minus 2AB cosine angle C. So angle C here is the sum of these two guys. So 18.4 plus 45, that's going to give me uh, 63.4, right? So now I know angle C. So I can calculate this guy. So this is simply going to be, right, 1.44. Uh, we don't even need the times 10 to the power of 6 because we know the answer is going to be 10 to the power of 6. So this will be just this squared plus 7.2 squared uh, minus 2 times 1.44 and 7.2 and then cosine 63.4. And if we take the square root of all that, um, we're going to end up with our answer. So C is equal to uh, 6.68. And of course, we know that that's times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. Um, and so now, we need to figure out the angle at which C is acting. Now, in order to figure that out, we have to figure out this angle and add that to 45. So in order to figure out that angle, we could then use uh, sine law. So let's say I could say, um, 
for example, uh, sine angle C over C is equal to sine angle you know, B over B, which is equal to sine angle A over A. Uh, in this case, I don't need this one. I just need these two, all right? Because if that's A, B, and C. So angle C here is uh, 63. So, but well, first of all, what am I looking for? I'm looking for angle A. So I'm looking to solve for this, right? Because that's opposite the side of A. So this is angle A. This, this here was angle C, right? The angle is always opposite to the side. So therefore, um, angle A is equal to the inverse sine of. Now, we've got to take this denominator here and multiply it, take it up to to the other side and multiply, right? So it'd be A times sine angle C all over C. So that's going to equal uh, inverse sine of 1.44 uh, times sine 63.4 all over C which we calculated to be 6.68. And so now we'll get angle A, which turns out to be 11.1 uh, degrees. OK, so now that we know that the angle is 11.1 <coughs> degrees, then all we need to so now we know what this whole thing is, right? It's going to be 11.1 .1 plus 45. So the final uh, electric field at point B is going to be 6.68 uh, times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb at uh, 56.1 degrees and the angle would be like that right because 45 plus 11 there that's going to give you 56 so there's the final answer for the electric point at point B now the electric field at point A it, we could do it the same way right uh, the only <coughs> difference is the location. So uh, we would then have to, let's move this down a little bit here. So if we kind of did it again, um, here is B, and here is A, and here is the distances. Now in this case, this is 5 and 5 and 10. Uh, so we have to do basically the, what we did. Everything we did before, we have to do again. But this time, what's different is EA is going to be equal to EA. So this is Q1, and this is going to be Q2. So now we'll have to go. So essentially, uh, it would again be EA1 is going to be KQ all over uh, R squared. And so that's going to be 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times 4 times 10 to the power of negative 6 divided by, now in this case, remember this is 5 too. So that's 10 on the bottom and 5. That's going to be 0 0.5 squared plus uh, 0 0.1 squared, right? And then we're not going to take the square root because it's r squared. And then we'll get an answer for that. And then we'll go EA2 is going to be equal to, same thing, right? KQ2 over r squared. And this, this, is, this is a different r now, right? Because um, this R is going to be here. Oops, I kind of drew that as a curve. 
And so <clears throat> you'll get this. And this is going to be uh, 0 0.5 squared plus uh, 0 0.1 squared. Um, and so when we work that out, so we get 2.88 uh, 10 to the negative 6. And notice they're, they're the same, right? Because uh, this distance is 10, and this distance is 10, and the, and the vertical distance is the same. So they're actually the same distance apart. Now, both of these charges are pushing, right? Because if you remember, uh, electric fields are due to a, a positive test charge. So therefore, a positive test charge would be repelled by both Q1 and Q2, just like before. <clears throat> However, now we have some symmetry to take advantage of. So if we kind of um, draw this position at point A, um, we know, now first of all, you know, what's this angle here? Let's try and figure out what this is. So again, this is uh, 5 over 10, and it's the same for the other side. So the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of 5 over 10, right? You know how I'm getting that, right? So if this is the angle, right, it's opposite over adjacent. So if I work that out, I get 26.5 uh, or 26 points, you could say 26.6 degrees uh, for theta. And so now I know that this guy is pushing this way at 26.6 uh, and the other guy is pushing the exact same amount at 26.6. Uh, and so Essentially, now I what I can do here is let you know. Here's a here's a good idea. Last time I did this using uh, cosine law and sine law, I added them up. Um, but this time, perhaps I will uh, cut them up into x and y. Now, one of the nice things here is that I know that if I add them up, the resultant is going to be vertical. And the reason for that is because both of the, these are both the same magnitude, right? Uh, 2.88. And they're both going to cancel each other horizontally. So if I kind of draw them head to tail, I'm going to get something that looks like this. So my resultant is going to go straight up. And <coughs> uh, in terms of what this is, um, I can do this, again, I can use cosine and sine law, but how about we do this using uh, x and y? So, for example, x and y, and then let's add them up. Now, I know my, uh, my x's are going to cancel out, but what are my y's? They're going to add up. So, in both cases, the y is going to be uh, 2.88 times 10 to the power of 6, it's going to be up, but it's going to be uh, times sine uh, 26.6. So therefore, it, we've got two of them, right? So essentially, the resultant's going to be 2 times 2.88 times 10 to the power of 6 times sine 26.6, right? Because if you think about it just like this, if that's theta 26.6 and this is 2.88, then this side is going to be 2.88 times sine theta. And that's essentially what I've done, except there's, there's here's one of them, and then there's another one, exactly the same, on the other side. Right? Here's one, here's the other one. They're both, go they're both going up, and they add up together to give you this guy. So my answer is going to be, so my answer is uh, 2.57, no, actually 2.5, it was 2.579, so actually this is 2.58, uh, 
uh, times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb, and it's uh, straight up. So that was E at, at, at point A. Okay? So that was question number 19.